Arcturus is a new Omicron COVID subvariant that is causing pink eye. Lots of respiratory viruses cause pink eye. So how do you know? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So it's been a little while since I've done a video about COVID, but this has got a little twist to it. So we thought we would do another video about this. So pink eye or conjunctivitis is one of the more commonly diagnosed infections in pediatrics. But there are lots of different pink eye slash conjunctivitis. I guess that would be conjunctivitis eye. I'm not quite sure what the plural of that is. But anyways, viruses and bacteria are certainly the most common forms, but there's also allergic conjunctivitis as well as other things can irritate the conjunctiva in order to cause redness and itching, it's pain, etc. So what is a conjunctiva? The conjunctiva is the outer layer of the eyeball that we can, that's facing out. As well as the, you know, it goes around both the, the back a little bit, but not all the way to the back. And it's also the lining of the eyelid itself. So it kind of goes up and then makes a fold and comes back down to the eyelid. So all of that is considered the conjunctiva. And any of that can be inflamed. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, there are lots of different viruses and bacteria can cause this. But only bacterial conjunctivitis is to be treated with an antibiotic with drops. None of the others. OK, now the inflammation that could happen can make it hurt. As I said, it can make an itch. Um, and, and, and of course, you can make an eye discharge. But one of the main things that differentiates between a bacterial conjunctivitis and all of the others is that a bacterial conjunctivitis will usually have lots of pus and it continues to reaccumulate, reaccumulate um, where and it's usually more thick. Whereas the other forms are usually more of a watery discharge, uh, maybe a little bit of um, pus to it, but usually it's not thick, you know, this um, significant amount. And also one of the main, you know, for all of them, you can certainly like wake up with the crusty eye, you know, like crusty, they kind of like pick off, etc. But again, the, the, the reaccumulation is really the, the main thing that differentiates a bacteria versus all the other forms. Now, in the three years of us dealing with COVID, we have not really talked about conjunctivitis, pink eye, throughout all of this. So this is something that is kind of new. So what is actually going on here? Okay, so this new um, Omicron subvariant and the uh, initial or the, the lettering of it is, I'm going to get this right, XBB.1.16. And there's now being called Arcturus. Now, this is being reported at this substrain. It, it is an Omicron. So past immunity um, should help us out still. OK, but the thing that about this, besides the conjunctivitis, is that there's often a high fever as well as a pretty nasty cough. However, now that's something that you can see with a lot of other things. But this particular variant was first discovered in India, but now it has making its way to America and it has been identified in over half of the states. So this is something that's coming around. It is something that does seem to be particularly common or more common in the pediatric population. Now, here's a fun fact for you. So Arcturus, it is the third brightest star in the night sky. And it actually means guardian of the bear, and it's felt to overlook the Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Now, why is it being used for this particular Omicron subvariant? I looked it up. I haven't got a clue. So if anybody knows the answer to that, send us um, a message, you know, or, you know, a little comment down below. But uh, would love to know about this because I can't figure out why they named it. But Arcturus, it's kind of a cool name, right? You know, I think we know that other um, Greek words like, you know, Omicrons and Beta. So maybe they've exhausted the uh, Greek lettering and maybe now they're going into other words as well. But that's kind of the origin of it. Now, as far as this, there's another very, very common virus called adenovirus that is so commonly the most common forms of common cold and also in pediatrics, one of the most common forms of conjunctivitis, especially viral. So how do you differentiate between those? But based upon clinical symptoms, you can't. Of course, a test will tell you. And historically speaking, with other forms of COVID, other variants, doing a swab of eye discharge or just even the lining for the fluid that has not been a very successful way of finding it. However, it would be interesting to see 
because of the amount of pus and it's actually coming out through there if a swab would be different this go around. I suspect it will, but we don't have any data to show that. But certainly if somebody before they wanted to stick a stick up their nose to see if they had COVID and they wanted to do a rapid test to see if it shows up on there. Hey, I have no problem with that. Again, if you do that, let us know. So I know I can tell other people whether that's a successful thing or not. Now, also at a lot of laboratories, through one nasopharyngeal swab, you can test for adenovirus, COVID, for all rhinoviruses, um, RSV virus, influenza viruses all at once. You know, so there are tests that will do that. But do I really think that that's necessary? No, I don't. Why? Because you're not going to do anything differently for this type of conjunct viral conjunctivitis compared to all the other viral conjunctivitis. So what should one do? First and foremost, you should not be in school, should not be in work if you have pink eye of any sort, if it is infectious. Now, of course, if it's allergic and a person would usually know that because it's more of an ongoing type of thing. But as long as there is an eye discharge scene, conjunctivitis scene, one should be kept out of school. That's part of the contagiousness. And of course, you know, that's true, not just for COVID, but, you know, of course, all the other viruses as well. And especially if a person has a fever, they shouldn't be going to school or work as well. Now, We've talked many times before about our immune support protocol. Um, I've put it in previous um, videos and we have it um, on our Patreon page. Our, our patients have access to the patient portal. But of course, with any type of virus, you should start the immune protocol with the high dose vitamin A and the higher doses of the zinc and the vitamin C and echinacea or larynx for the arabinogalactan to improve white blood cell production. And that's something, of course, we say on the first sign of any illness to do it. So Whatever you start off, whether it's the cough or the fever or a cold symptoms or eye discharge, if you ask yourself, should I start it? You've answered the question. Yes, you should start it. Now, addition to that, we should all be doing really good hair and washing anyways. You know, kind of something we talked about at the beginning of the pandemic. And I think a lot of people kind of let that go to the wayside. But hand washing with hot water and soap. No antibi antibacterial soap is needed is, of course, a very good thing to stop passing it from one person to another. In addition to that, um, of course, you know, don't share towels, don't share pillows, any other things that you could be laying on or rubbing your eyes against. And any of those types of linens or towels or whatever should be washed in hot water in order to, as well as, of course, the detergent in order to um, make them no longer contagious to other people for when you put it on. All right. So a little something different, a little something new. So, uh, hey, you know, I haven't seen any cases of this. Who knows if I will? Um, but of course, it's good for y'all to know that this is out there. So have a great day.